so. So here we are again. So, um, oh, something's happened to my computer screen. Ah, oh, that's right. Okay, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, the computer screen was uh, did something funny. So uh, here we are on a Thursday night, and uh, it's the last one for this week, the last live stream for this week, um, <clears throat> because we have a bank holiday in uh, tomorrow, celebrating VE Day. So that's what's happening tomorrow. Um, I don't know whether that's the same in uh, in we got uh, just from Germany. So are you from Germany? So. I don't know whether it's the same for you, but in England we've got a bank holiday. And we haven't had um, the guy, what's his name, Ed from uh, from America. Um, he hasn't been online for a couple of weeks. So anyway, the point is there's no session tomorrow night and then the weekend. So I've been promising to do this for a little while. Um, we're going to go through the cycle of four. Uh, and again, we're, it's a Thursday, so we're going to finish. Uh, I want to try and finish a little bit early to try and get uh, get outside for the for the clapping for the key workers. Okay, it, you, at first it was the NHS, and now it's spread out to the key workers, and rightly so. So hopefully we'll we'll get out to to uh, to them. So <clears throat> uh, to preempt um, what we were what we've been doing before. Um, I went through the lazy tables uh, with people. Oh, and I, I, just before we start, I would like to apologise. There's a couple of people who have asked for the cycle of four, and I haven't sent them through yet. I'm really sorry, but I'll do that. I, honestly, I'll do that tomorrow <coughs> or tonight, straight after this. So, um, the lazy tables are essentially really, really simple um, uh, exercise. So the lazy tables are the prelude to the cycle of four or i like to i like to say they're the prelude uh, to the cycle of four um because it gets you into the mindset of setting up your breath holds in a slightly different way from uh, maybe an app or um, a table where you have very specific things to do in a timing sort of way so the uh, lazy tables are the prelude to the cycle of four Lazy tables in principle super easy. If you if you you know you, you can hold your breath for say two minutes uh, and then it gets a little bit of a challenge. All you're going to do is is set a, a countdown timer for two minutes fifteen for sake of argument, and you don't look at it. You just kind of let it go and you hold your breath. And when it gets a little bit tough, you look at it and it says ten seconds to go and you you can you can make it. And you're basically talking your body your subconscious into saying, well, I don't hold my breath for two minutes. I hold it for two fifteen. That's what I do every time. When you can hold it for 215, then you just up it a little bit. So the principle is very simple. Um, uh, and, and But it is a matter of setting up some equipment and then just kind of doing it in, you know, doing the lazy tables. So that's why I use it as a, as a prelude for the cycle of four. Now, the cycle of four is a lot more complicated. Um, there's a lot more um, aspects to it. Now... <clears throat> Um, let's have a look at what the cycle of four. So uh, there are three different vari variables that we use with the cycle of four. So we have uh, the control, the visualization, and the stress. They're the three uh, aspects that we, we uh, mess around with, that we change. Now I call it the cycle of four um, because actually, although there's three aspects, that they kind of go in, in sets, of, uh, sets of four you'll see why a little bit later on <clears throat> okay so um first off i'm just going to go through what each of those words means uh, and what we mean by it and then pretty much after that it is fairly self-explanatory that you are doing some holds with uh, training control some holds with testing control some holds with internal visualization some holds with external some holds with low O2 stress, some hold with high O2 CO2 stress. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, I will state here that this is the only table I have found that you can do 
um, low O2 training. So all the apps you've got where they do the low O2 tables, they don't do low O2. This is the only table that actually can give you low O2, so your body low O2, and, and so you can learn to tolerate it. Equally well, high CO2. Um, this isn't particularly a uh, high CO2 exercise. It, it's it's just a breath hold where you will be triggered to breathe by your co2 if you want high co2 exercises they're very very easy the easiest thing in the world to to train for high co2 literally go for a run around a block and then hold your breath that's it and you won't be able to do it you won't be able to hold your breath for like you know five seconds and that's because co2 is massive so um, last night I was explaining about skipping, super easy, three minutes of skipping the last 30 seconds is breath hold or attempted breath hold and that's massive CO2. Uh, yeah. So high CO2 is super easy, again don't the, the apps you get and the, the tables that you work out and uh, they, they, they're not what they say they are. They're, they're alright for what you know for a beginner to start out with but they're not at all what you're what what, what it says it is okay so high carbon dioxide this also the cyclophor is also not a uh, a high co2 really okay run around the block hold your breath that's high co2 okay so uh, let's just go through these ones one at a time so the cyclophor uh, the control of the cyclophor one is training and one is testing okay so um, uh, a testing would be literally uh, eyes closed with a stopwatch. Now I've I use um, uh, oop I use this this bad boy. Okay, uh, let me just hold it up to you. Can I get it on camera? There we go. And it's got a stopwatch uh, and it's got um, a countdown timer. Uh, so that's a stopwatch and that's a countdown timer. Okay, and you just set it and it does all three. And and it was literally uh, I think it was from a pound shop or maybe. Uh, three quid from um, uh, from Klaus Olsen or something, um, and it's got a countdown and it's got a stopwatch and, and yeah, that's that's all you need. Um, <clears throat> uh, obviously, if you've got it on your phone, you can use it on your phone. But I like having bits of kit that I do specific things with. Um, uh, just maybe I'm just a hoarder, uh, but if I have my phone, the likelihood of me getting distracted by looking up something is high. If I've just Ditch the phone and I've got a stopwatch and a timer. That's good to go. Kitchen's timers are work fine. I digress. So uh, testing uh, will be literally a stopwatch. You hold your breath, so three candle blows. <gasps> Start the stopwatch. Lay it face down. So you're not looking at the stopwatch at all and just hold your breath until you feel uh, a challenge. So it's up to you what you think is a challenge um, some people don't get contractions at all they will just kind of feel a kind of stress come on some people get contractions coming on super early so it's up to you okay but it shouldn't be uh, painful shouldn't be hard work just where the challenge comes okay where the challenge comes um, and generally one one way we say is maybe four contractions okay um, so the first contraction you go oh was that a contraction I say quite a few people don't even get them, so it's irre irrelevant for that. Uh, so the first one, oh, was that a contraction? Second one, yeah, that was a contraction. Third one, you can get yourself kind of sorted. Fourth one, and then you and then you, you kind of start breathing. Okay, so it, where it becomes a challenge. And then that's your time. Oh, that's your time. Okay, so you obviously stop your stopwatch and you start breathing, and that's your time. That's your basic time. I'd round it up, round it down. You know, if it's... You know, you know, 10 seconds either way, just round it up, get a nice general number that you're nice, happy with, okay? It's not quite your personal worst, but it's gonna be similar, okay? So it's something that you know you can do. Sit down, uh, prepare for a little while, you know, for you know, two or three minutes, you can do it. Okay, so it's not your personal worst, but it's, it's close to that, okay? And that's, that's your testing, okay? Once you've got that number, then if you remember the lazy tables, that's that's your two minutes that I gave you an example earlier. That's your two minutes. So your training will be 215. 
just 15 seconds longer. Now the idea is not to make the hold. We all know we could do 215 if two if we could do two two minutes with a challenge, okay? 215, we know we can do it. Okay? So it's not a matter of doing it, it's about doing it nicely. That's the big key. So you go through these exercises and you if you can do 215, if you can make 215 your personal worst, then you're three steps ahead of the game. Okay. The first step is to know you can do it. Well, you know you can do it. It's a challenge at two minutes or 2.15. You can do it. But then uh, get into the point where you can do it confidently, comfortably, well, and then it becomes your personal worst. And then you can step up the next one. Okay. So that's the difference between training and testing. Visualization. Okay. Uh, it's um, uh, either internal or external. So internal is eyes closed in a quiet room. All right? So any sort of distraction you're getting is internal. All right? Now we do a visualization exercise, um, we do a distraction exercise where, you've, where you can try different types of internal um, visualizations, but for this, just in, internal is, is, is enough. Okay, doesn't matter what it is, it's internal, it's self-generated. And then uh, external is what we'd call a distraction. Uh, so for me, the best one, not for me personally, but as a coach, I tell people, um, eyes closed with the TV turned on. Okay, it's really, really good for that because uh, TV is a visual and audio uh, kind of medium. So if you've got your eyes closed, you will be missing out on information that the people who made the program, program expect you to have. So you'll be listening to it and you'll hear somebody chatting. And you'll go, okay, somebody chatting, it's a, it's a man, it's a woman, whatever. They sound angry, they sound sad. And then somebody else will talk and you weren't visualizing the second person because you didn't know anything about them. So as soon as they start talking, you go, all oh, right, that's a woman. And he was angry and he's angry at the woman or he was a, a lady, a man, and, was, and whichever way around. And you, it, it is stepping on your visualizations. It doesn't matter what the TV program is, have a TV on, but with your eyes closed, okay? So that's internal, external. And the last one is stress. Now, I've kind of already kind of mentioned this, um, low O2 or high CO2, and this is the thing that makes you want to breathe, okay? Now, 90% um, of people are triggered to breathe by high CO2, but some people, Darren, uh, <laughs> you know who you are, um, are triggered by low O2, okay? And it doesn't really affect you... Uh, in a day-to-day -day living or in in normal free diving terms, but you need to you need to uh, train both sides. You don't need to know which you are particularly for most of the, most training, uh, because you just hold your breath until the comfort goes and then and then you come up. Doesn't matter why, but in this case we are tweaking uh, both of them. So it's not particularly high CO2, but it's definitely low O2. Okay, so there is only one way. Uh, to put the body in a, a hypoxic state. Um, and that is to get rid of the carbon dioxide, okay? Um, in other words, you do um, uh, hyperventilation. Now, hyperventilation, we are taught, is dangerous, and it is dangerous if you're in water, okay? Hyperventilation is dangerous if you're holding your breath in water. If you're f sitting on the sofa it's not quite as dangerous because what we're doing is we're getting rid of the carbon dioxide which is what 90 people 90 percent of people get triggered to breathe due to carbon dioxide and we're getting that out of the question we're moving that away okay? which allows us then to play with the oxygen levels in our body okay so effectively we're doing uh hyperventilation now in the cycle of four we go through a very specific uh breathing pattern including hyperventilation but it's very very specific it's not just endless so it's very specific which means you can judge it one day and then judge it against the next day okay and it's the only way that you can um it's the only way you you can you can uh, get a hypoxic state. Um, so Ted's asked um, about uh, Wim Hof. Now Wim Hof uh, does use hyperventilation. He also uses um, a lot of peer pressure and a lot of uh, mental expectations. 
Wim Hof himself, as far as I'm aware, nice guy, doesn't really change charge money for his his his, his ideas. But then there was a, I believe it was his family got in and, and built the Wim Hof method that that is pushed forwards, and it's not as comprehensive as it may be sold as. Okay, so he, they use slightly different techniques. Uh, they do use hyperventilation, but they also use uh, other not breathing techniques in their seminars and systems uh, to, to kind of help you do things that you didn't think you could do. And it, it's amazing because once you've done something you didn't think you could do, then then you're like, wow, I can do this. I can do I can do the next bit. I can do the next bit. So it's self fulfilling once you've done the first bit and it doesn't matter how he got you to do the first bit it's it's the knock-on effect anyway i waffle i waffle i've been told off for waffling i'm talking about wind moth and he's not part of the, the the explanation tonight nothing at all thanks ted <laughs> okay so um so that's that's the three uh things that we mess around with the control the visualization and the stress okay so kind of explain what they are and you should really be able to work out um, how you um, you know you, you, you mix and match. So um, you're going to be you're going to be training uh, every other day, okay? Pretty regimentedly every other day. So the first four sessions will all be testing. It'll be internal visualization with uh, long breaths, okay, uh, which is CO two. And then external visualization with short breaths, external visualization with long breaths, internal visualization with short breaths. All of this being testing. Okay? And then the next four, and this is why it's called the cycle of four, it's exactly the same pattern, but with training. Okay? It sounds complicated, but once you see it written down, uh, once you write it down, it's super, super simple. Okay? You've just got those three variations. So ignoring the the training or uh, testing, okay, ignore or ignore that. You're just going visualization internal, stress low O2, visualization internal, stress high CO2, and then external. So you just do both of them internal, both of them external, and then the next set of four is testing or training. And that's that's it. Okay, hope everybody's happy with that. Now. Um, uh, I say I said this before, and I'll say again. If you uh, just uh, message me on Messenger, please, uh, uh, Facebook Messenger, I can send you the the cycle of four as a PDF uh, straight away. Super easy. Um, I don't have to email. I can just send it to you. It's fine. Um, so the other important thing, and this is super super important. Bear in mind, we are looking to uh, progress. Progression is the key with our uh, training. All we want is progression. All right? And the only way you can progress is to analyze what you've done so that you can learn from it. Okay, so each session you do will have a preparation, a breathe up, a breath hold, and an an analysis. Okay. Now I've told you what the breath a uh, breath hold is, because that will be one of the training uh, the training internal low O2. That that's the breath hold. Preparation, super easy. Something like uh, minute holds, you know, two or three minute holds, just to kind of get yourself, you know, first time you hold your breath, you oh no, get a bit more comfortable, sit up straight or whatever. Preparation super easy. Told you what a breath hold is, but I really want to talk about the analysis, which is on the screen now. Get a notebook, you've got a diary, obviously you've got a training diary because you wouldn't be here if you hadn't got a training diary because you know, I'm watching you and you can't come out of a training diary. So you get yourself your you get your training diary, which I know you've got. Um so um training diary and you write down your uh, mental analysis and your physical analysis. Now, when we say uh, mental an analysis, it's just your instant thoughts about how, uh, number one, how you, you stayed focused on your visualization, whether it was internal, external. How, just just grade it, give it a mark, discuss it. Bad, good, 
you know, awesome. I, I did it brilliantly. Just one word, okay, or a short sentence. Um, number two, how you uh, remembered the sequences of tasks. Now, at the beginning, it's going to be quite complicated, okay? Um, and consistency, and your ability to perform the sequence um, uh, that you were trying to do, okay? Um, and, and then observation, uh, your ability to recognize changes um, due to the different setup of dive. So that's your mental state. Okay. And then four parts of physical, literally location, you know, was it good location, bad location, aptitude, like how you felt that day, tired or, or, or whatever. And then um, a comment about the hold length and the difficulty. Okay, so it's not a time about the hold length, it's a comment about the hold length and the difficulty. Okay, so that's it, that's the analysis. Obviously, when this goes up on, on uh, YouTube, you can that will be there, so you can do it, uh, look at it, but I will send it through as a, as a PDF anyway. Okay, so um, The only uh, thing I haven't done is the breathe up. Okay, now this is the complicated one. This is the one that uh, is going to be tricky to get the hang of. It's, it's simple in theory, but it's, um, you know, a little bit more complex than your breathe up would normally be. Okay, and you've got basically two options. You've got short breaths and long breaths. Long breaths are uh, four sets of four breaths that get longer short breaths are four sets of four breaths that get shorter that's it okay so the short breaths you start normal breathing for four breaths and then it gets shorter and then it gets shorter again and then uh, the last set of four breaths is super hard in and out you can't do it you, you've got to breathe uh, in for a count of one so and then out for a count of, that that quick you've got to do that four times okay that's super short so full breath in one second I mean that's hard work that's three breaths considering you've been getting faster and faster and faster that, that's short breath the long breaths start normal and get longer and longer and longer until you're trying to do an in account for an in for a count of 16 and out for a count of 32 which is super long okay so hyperventilation short breaths just to get your uh, get rid of the co2 so you're doing a, a low o2 t training and the long breaths kind of co2 um we had to call it something so we we called it that uh, it's not really CO2 training, but, you know, uh, for 90% of people, that's why they're going to hold their breath or start breathing. Okay, so the only other thing I'm going to suggest you do is you get a metronome. So, again, on you can download one as an app, uh, or you might have a, one if you played piano. Uh, I don't know why piano, any musical instrument, you might have a metronome, and it just clicks. Okay. Um... So you set it on to 60 BPM, so it clicks every second, and then it gives you a nice regimented thing that you're, you're, you're kind of trying to work to, okay? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's the metronome. And the other thing I suggest on the, uh, on the, uh, on the form um, is uh, using your fingers to count the breaths. So uh, you've got uh, four sections on each finger. One, two, three, four. So the first set of breaths so let's go for the uh, short breaths you're breathing normally for one breath two breaths three breaths four breaths slightly quicker for one breath two breath three breaths four breaths really quick for one breath two breath three breath so quick you can't keep up with it for one breath two breath three breath four breaths now if you're doing short breaths, you don't need to do candle blows. Deep breath in, hold. That's it. All right. Uh, now I, you can you can do two 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 of each, 
uh, Breffold on the on the um, cycle of four, but especially with the long breath holds, uh, the long breaths, it gets quite a long exercise. So usually do one hold. You can do it twice if you want, but usually it'll just be one hold. And that's it. That is your cycle of four. Um, yeah, what can I say? Um, so I'll put down in the comments here. So the, the first day, uh, first day it will be, and this is just an example, you'll have uh, internal visualization. Oh, no, hang on. It's not typing up. Internal visualization. Um, long breaths and it's testing I'm typing this down and then I'll, I'll, you'll see it in a minute there you go second day will be external short breaths Hopefully nobody types anything in else it was it was uh, third day external long and the fourth day is internal short. I think that's all right. Okay, so there you go. So that's that's the first four days, and then you repeat again with uh, training rather than testing. Whew. Um, oh yeah, so Darren put together a simple template that could be used. Um, yes, I can pass it on. I'll have to find that. Um, oh yeah, uh, so I'll put that together and send it out. So if you go on Messenger, on Facebook Messenger and message me. It's the easiest way for me to get you the um, Cycle of Four um, PDF. Okay. Hopefully, I've explained it slightly different from the PDF, so that you can read the PDF and watch this and and get the the two kind of mixed together. It is simple in theory. Um, it's just there's a lot to be done. It's a lot a lot of little things. So it's different from um, exercises you've probably done before, but. Um, you've got to do it for, um, it takes at least a, a month, and then I suggest two months, every other day. Um, so, oh, it's eight o'clock, I can hear the clapping. So, um, yeah, it takes at least a month, give it a go. So, if you're in England, go outside and, and clap. I'll leave this on so you can say goodbye after your, after your um, clapping. Go outside and clap. Okay, cheers. <laughs>